Good afternoon, everyone. I feel very privileged to be here with you all today, and of course, our esteemed panel speakers here on stage. Um, today, we're, we're here together to celebrate the launch of the Luminary Series, a partnership between the Del Mar and VNA Dundee. And so, let me introduce our guest to you first. So, first of all, we have Mauricio. Muchiola, the lead architect of the VNA Dundee and the founder of PIM Studio Architects. And we have, of course, Kengo Kuma san, the founder of Kengo Kuma and Associates. And then we have Richard Patterson, the master distiller from the Domo. And then we have the master whiskey maker, Greg Glass, with us. So I would like to start with you, Kuma san. So what drew you to this partnership and how well do you know about Delmore's work before you engage in this project? Yeah, as a, as a, uh, basically I'm a big fan of Scotland and Scottish culture and the whiskey is, 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 uh, is, is, a, is, a, is a main player of Scottish culture and as a collaboration with them is very exciting. As a, because whiskey as a, as is also very much related with nature itself. Uh, as I believe Arctisha is the same, and uh, the, the, through the collaboration, I learned many things about whiskey, <laughs> and, uh, and it's a very exciting process. Great. Uh, Richard, how well do you know about Kumasan's work? Well, uh, I have to say I'm very honored and privileged that I, during my many travels abroad, Japan was one of our main markets. And when I traveled there, I was privileged and honored to see some of Kengo's uh, work, uh, particularly uh, Sunny Hills, which is one of the first in Tokyo. And I saw this mammoth building, but with all this wood structure interlaced. And it wasn't just where it was, it was just the wood had hit me. And I thought, even before I knew you, I thought of the connection of wood, because make no mistake, when we talk about wood in the whiskey industry, it accounts for something like 80% of what is going to give you the style, the consistency, but more important, that extra level of luxury. So selection and the way, in fact, Kingo has selected his uh, beautiful buildings. And then when you come into Dundee, wow, what do you see? You see the V&A right in front of you. And for that, we're a much richer nation, particularly up here in the V&A in Dundee. So how did the creative process start? How was the first conversation? The first, had? first we had to look at his buildings and wood was part of that. And with the wood, and we discussed it, Greg and I, with the different styles of wood. And of course, we thought of Japanese oak, uh, which is a, a superb oak, but you must give it time. And then Scottish oak. And then we thought about kintsugi, when you see it for the first time. This means golden threads. And to many people, what are you talking about? This is, in fact, when you smash something and you put it together. A bit like human people that go through bad times and they have to get over their times. They have to have that determination. But once they are over it, many people think they're stronger from it. And that's what we believe in Kintsugi. When it is put together, it's even more beautiful. And that's why we wanted to interlock Scottish oak with Japanese oak. But at the end of the day, make no mistake, it has to be the style. It has to be the character and it has to reflect beauty and perfection. And that's what we were both seeking in the first initial uh, run of samples, which took us, you know, not just one or two months, years. We had to look at our stocks to see that it would complement uh, the whiskies with the building that Kengo is talking about. Nice. And Greg, what do you think in the process of this um, project? Do you, what, what else do you see are the common thread of architecture and whiskey making? Um, certainly that balance of the love of nature and the nurturing of that nature, whether it be what we're doing in the whiskey world or in architecture. But, but I think um, with the collaboration, there were a lot of shared sort of passions. So there's a shared sort of passion, but also shared passions that we, we, we all had. So particularly, Maurizio, when we were developing the, uh, the collectible edition together, you know, s sitting down, talking about flavours, common characteristics that we liked, and then really building up that, that recipe and then the thread for 
the the two releases being the the use of um, the, the natural Scottish oak and and Japanese oak as well was was really key. Yeah, yeah. and Mauricio, maybe we can walk up, you you can walk us through the essential process, the step that you went to create the sculpture and also the rare editions. Yeah, I think I mean it's been a very fascinating project. It's it's been a first for me to work at such a sort of small scale compared to a uh, building scale. And it's, it's been very fascinating. I think what is interesting, which relates back to the fact that in our job, although very different, there are similarities in the approach. Because and no matter what scale we work on as designers, I think the approach is always to try to find the right balance between the different ingredients that we use. And as architects or designers, our ingredients are stone, timber, metal, and other materials. And for whiskey making, you have different ingredients, but still the methodology is to try to find the right harmony between all the ingredients. I think we found a lot of really interesting links, even talking about materials and texture, color. And during the, the visit, when you talked about framing nature, you know, the, the, all of these things really s built up lots of different directions and, and stories that we could, could build. But it was actually, uh, you know, f a flavor-led collaboration, but inspired by all of these different aspects. So those connections with texture, for example, is, is also inspired how we've developed the, the, the whiskey itself. The thing you've got to remember is that when we look over here, this is a 15-year-old Dalmore. 15 years, the youngest age. Over here we have the 48 years old. We're going back to 1966. These are casks that are old. They all have their own individual character, but you must revere them, you must respect them, because they're going to take much longer to fuse together. And that's why the formulation, both that Greg and I discussed, are two separate Dalmore's expressions, but the workmanship behind it, the craftsmanship, the legacy is like the buildings, they will live on for many years to come. Yeah, and here we're talking about the passion and the emotion that you want to create in the whiskey, in the special editions. And in, in a design perspective, when you are creating this sculpture, how do you materialize this kind of emotions and taste and everything into something you want to showcase the result? Yeah, I think, again, it's it was very important to find the right harmony and, uh, and to play with materials. During our discussions, we found that wood was obviously something that is, is very important for Komasan architecture, something I've learned from him in the many years working uh, with him, but it's also obviously very important for whiskey making. And the wood and the composition of the casks, or what the casks have had before, it's what makes the, the taste of the whiskey, makes it special. So we wanted to create something very special, which reflects this philosophy. And where the materials, they, the combination of the right materials in the right sort of angles, in the right uh, sort of position in the space around the, the whiskey, they create this special experience that we've managed to make with the sculpture. Yeah, beautiful. And Kumasa, maybe you can tell us about your concept and you worked with a local craftsman to build this sculpture, right? Yeah, so <clears throat> to work with a local craftsman is always a very exciting process for us. We did use the, the, the Japanese and the oak and the Scottish oak together and the uh, and texture is different and the color is slightly different, but it's still the oak. It is a, it's a metal is, a, is used to combine the, such beautiful diversity. A, and the shape-wise, we got a hint from leaves and tree. It's a kind of big tree. A, and, a, and it's not easy geometry. It's a, it's a, again, we didn't use 90 degrees. Yeah, and if, if I can add just, I mean, because we are talking all about oak as a material that gives the flavor to the whiskey. And, you know, it, after we've done the tour of the building, we visited just now the, the Vienna Dundee and the, the Oak Room design by Macintosh. We think that we have used oak a lot in this building, in the Vienna Dundee, 
in the walls in this room, in the floor outside this space and in the galleries and in the, in the main hall with all the cladding sort of particles. And we used wood to create a special welcoming space for the, for the visitors and for this museum. And Macintosh used the same wood, oak, to create a very special tea room over 100 years ago. And here again, we used the same oak wood for the sculpture. And the same oak wood is used for that. And I think one single material, depending on the way things are assembled, the way we find different harmonies with that, through that material, they can, it can give us so many different things, like whiskey or an old tea room or a building. And that's very special, the way we ref refer ourselves to materials that the na nature gives us. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very, fa very fascinating. And what I found also very interesting is that we're talking about aging a lot, maturing a lot. So it's not only for whiskey, it's also for architecture, for the material, natural materials as well. And um, I think aging, we don't talk so much about aging in contemporary architecture. So, but actually when a building is finished, the life is just begun. So what, what does longevity in architecture mean for you, Mauricio and Kuma-san? And how would you like this building to age? Yeah, and in 20th century, the architects also have forgotten the, the importance of aging. As a, as a after completion, building was beautiful, but as a, after that, people forget the building. <laughs> but as a, as, but as, as we, but we as, uh, know the aging as, of the Renaissance building, the Baroque building, is as, 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 as adding the value to the building. And as, uh, and as uh, we should recover that kind of so, as, uh, aging process. And as uh, this the BNA building, as, and as uh, we did, what material we did use as uh, gives the value to the building after afterwards, the same as the, the oak on the cask, the cask, the, the oak of the cask is adding value as every year to to whiskey. Is the same thing is happening in this building? Yeah. And how do you work with time, Richard and Greg? T time is everything. So these whiskies at 15 years old and 48 years old are really shining in their own way. But when we talk about aging, we are coming back to the same words that has been used so many times. We're looking for that lovely harmony. Now, uh, next month is the month of November when Greg and I will go up to uh, Dalmore and we will know thousands of casks. We'll see how they're developing, are they asleep, are they needing a new cask, new extension, a new expression and we'll develop it. But then we put the whiskies together to see if they will shine. But that comes back to aging. How long will it take? It's the same when we use sherry wood or port. Will it take two years? Will it take three years? Mother Nature will tell us. We're back to Mother Nature. They will, she will say to, it's ready or it's not ready. Because make no mistake, when it comes to the Dalmore, we cannot release it unless there's pure perfection coming through. So aging is absolutely critical. And I think there's probably another sort of dimension to the, the time that it uh, takes to create a whiskey. And I know, Maritza, particularly when we were, were, were chatting, was how do you go about setting down your ideas to start off with? You know, do you start with your final vision or do you build it up and it, it organically will change? So the, the way that you develop a, a whiskey or design a whiskey is probably another way of putting it, is um, the inspiration can come from different ways. And it, as you're developing in time, there's a time of our individual components and cask, but it's also the time to actually do the development, the prototyping. So the, the numbers of iterations that we did for this project, you know, it was, was amazing. And it, it's really about that back and forth of communication over that duration of time. Um, yeah, and I think, the, I mean, the idea of going through many iterations when, you know, as you say, when you're creating a new whiskey is very similar to going through a lot of different design iterations when we're designing a building. And in that sense, mistakes are a big part of our job. Because going through many iterations and testing many different ideas 
in different ways, most of them we found that don't work. And the, there is one that we find that is satisfactory and it works, and then that was creates the building and then it would create the right space, which has, is in harmony with the environment and with the rest of the, the cities or, or its context. And for you, Greg, how do you balance tradition and innovation? Um, th there's not really a disconnect. Um, there's sort of a evolution that happens. Um, but uh, So in terms of innovation, for example, we're, we've created uh, Kintsugi casks. Um, for, for the uh, collectible edition where we've actually combined the Japanese oak, American oak, and um, Windfell Tay oak, so not too far from here, um, and combined those together. Um, I think um, in terms of innovation, really we're, we're, I would say we're flavor-led, hands-on whiskey makers, as it were, um, and really it's about that sort of flavor profile and we can build the stories around that and sometimes it naturally takes us to something that nobody else has done before or it could be we're bringing back something that's gone back 160, 180 years, bring it back with the new technology that's here for us to then be able to evolve it in a different way. So there's not really any disconnect per se and then you can look at the technology of um, farming that then informs the, bar, the local barley that we're getting, the different varieties. So there's always going to be continual uh, evolution. And um, well, obviously, having worked with Richard for, for so many years, is your Richard as a master has really changed the Scotch whisky industry as, a, as an individual, but as part of a team together. Great. And talking about, talking about technology, Kumasan. I know that you were not a big fan of computerization of the architecture practice when you first started in the beginning of 1990s, but then you realized that computing is actually helping you to achieve something you always want to pursue, what you call comfortable complexity. So can you explain to us what comfortable complexity is about? Yeah, and does it apply I, yeah, to you? I, I don't want to be the, the slave of computer technology. I want to use computer technology yeah, as, a, as a good example of this building. As a, this building has a, it is a bit organic. The organic means as a, as a many, as a, as a complex, as a geometry is uh, combined together in, in this building. For example, the facade, there are many, many angles. Uh, and uh, also for the interiors, uh, we have the wooden, wooden panels, uh, different angles, uh, the different gaps. As uh, only computer can control uh, this kind of complexity. And as a uh, and um, as a uh, Mauricio is be, is very good at using computers. <laughs> 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 and as uh, and then as, uh, as uh, I am thinking about nature. But also, as we are using computer to, as a, to as a realize the nature in the building, there's a, uh, our attitude to the computer technology is like that. Yeah, I guess you will have a different relationship with technology then? Yes, but I think the key is what Kumas has said, that we don't want to be slave of technology, in the sense that computer and all the uh, so contemporary technology, we shall use it as a tool to realize a vision which is a public space or an interesting building or something that wouldn't be possible otherwise, but never just for the sake of using the most advanced technology just because it's available. We always use it, which is also why very often we use the most advanced technology in combination with traditional sort of craftsmanship, because the two things, they're not sort of alternative to each other. All the tools that we are available can be used together to create the sort of harmony that we want to achieve in the projects. I, I read an article that uh, Kumasan, you, you said uh, once to younger creative, you said, don't stay still. You have to travel, you have to go everywhere, you have to keep reinventing yourself. So how, how, how does your native culture and mentality inform your work and how do you combine your experience from different cultures to create something new? 
Yeah, so some exchange between different culture as a, as, a, as gives the inspiration for the next project. So, so it is a kind of exchange. It's collaboration with, with Dalmoa, but it's an exchange. As a, I learned the difference of Japanese oak and the Scottish oak <laughs> from them, and as a, the, and as a, as a, that's through that kind of process, as a, as a, we can go to the next step, and as, a, as a, also the Scotland, Japan, so we have many as a, as a history episode about exchange. Uh, Lenny McIntosh is as a, as a good example of the exchange. But he did to go to Japan, but he he learned many things from Japan, and as a, as a, and as, and also as a, and as many episodes as a, as a force bridge, the force bridge the Japanese structure engineers was involved in the force bridge is a, the design, and as a, and as. A, so, so it so looks like different cultures, but this exchange it can as a create as a, some kind of collaboration, and uh, and uh, so and, this, and this through the experience of Dundee, as a, I learned the importance of exchange. Mm -hmm. Great, and Mauricio, I think, well, I know that you work with Kumo Sound and, and, and office in many different locations and settings. So to you, and you also work with a lot of different nationalities and cultures. So cross-cultural collaborations, what's the value in it, in yeah, your opinion? I think it's very important. It's very important to, to learn and, as Kumo said, to have an exchange, cultural exchange with different cultures, with different people in order to be able to absorb different way of thinking and different points of view for, for what we do and in general for our culture. And that makes us richer and makes us way of thinking our approach to design and in general to life much more complex and, and fascinating and, and interesting and opens our view to the sort of unexpected solutions which then we try to translate into our designs. Great, and at, I think in the same capacity, the Delmore is also bringing the world to Scotland and bringing also Scotland to the world. So through these collaborations, what do you want to achieve? We're, we're always looking for perfection. And when we talk about innovation, I can honestly say to you, that is something that Greg and I will live 24 hours you know, a day because we are, we're wanting to see new things. But the public up there are so demanding. But we have to have something that's new, something that's fresh, but something that will perhaps show the next level of taste that will be new, but will be innovations that will get the real appeal that we're looking for. So it is a matter of, yes, traveling, a great way of seeing things. Greg and I are lucky to be uh, nosing and judging at the International Wine Spirit Competition, International Spirits Challenge every year, six to seven to 1,000 casks and samples every year so we can see what's going on. But it gives us a, a sort of a base camp to say, well, we've seen this, what can we do that will be different and will be acceptable to Joe Public? Because as I said, you've all got very discerning palates now, so we must have the right style, the right quality that will appeal to you. Great. I, I, I see that everyone starts drinking already, so I think I should wrap <laughs> this up. And uh, thank you very much again, Greg, Richard, Kumasan, Mauricio, and Vianney Dundee, and the Delmore, to give us this opportunity to be together to talk about beauty and time and value and harmony. So we will continue our conversation tonight. And thank you very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. And cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers.